Okay, we're here today with uh, two experts uh, as uh, in regard to cell towers. Uh, and we've had this issue in Pittsfield, Massachusetts with a cell tower going up very close uh, to homes in our Shacktown neighborhood in Southeast Pittsfield. And I'm very happy to welcome Frank Clegg, who is the former president of Microsoft Canada, who's here. Also, we have Paul Haru who is a professor of toxicology and health effects of electromagnetism at McGill University in Montreal, and Courtney Gillardi, who is a neighbor um, in our Chattown neighborhood, and of course, a, an advocate that if you've been paying attention in Pittsfield, you know who she is. So uh, each of you, welcome uh, to the show. Thanks, John. So Thanks. I want to start with you, Frank. Um, you know, you, uh, you have uh, been in the technology industry for some time, um, and this is something that you have learned a great deal about and have become an advocate uh, for, and in particular, uh, this sort of impact uh, health-wise uh, with, with cell tower. So, you know, so tell me a little bit about uh, your background and, and what led to this and also um, what you're seeing as far as health effects. Okay, well, John, thank you for the invitation. Um, I uh, was approached uh, about almost 10 years ago now by several neighbors who were concerned about cell towers going up near their homes. One was on top of a schoolyard and I had the opportunity because I had just retired to go and meet with experts uh, from around the world. I have had the opportunity to meet with experts from McGill as, as Paul is from the University of Toronto, from Harvard, Yale, Columbia, uh, an expert advisor to the World Health Organization and one of the lead scientific writers for Al Gore's team that won the Nobel Prize. So, you know, in my career, I've seen tremendous benefits technology can provide, but I've also seen if it's not implemented correctly, it can cause issues. And I am concerned about the way that we're using wireless technology today. I'm worried about, concerned about how we place cell towers, where we place them in terms of proximity to people's homes. Um, I'm very concerned about impact on children. Children are not little adults. They're, we can talk about this further, but their skulls are thinner. Their center of their brain uh, is closer to the end. So, you know, a cell tower will penetrate a child's skull 70%. Uh, and we have modeling to show that, whereas an adult, it will only penetrate 10%. And I'm very, very worried about 5G. The, the requirement, the technical requirements for 5G antennas is there have to be a lot more of them and they have to be closer to people's homes, schools, and where they work. And so we're seeing a lot of this work going, progressing where we don't really understand the health effects. So I'll make the first thing about 5G. There is, there is no science, there's no evidence to show that 5G is safe. We've, we've done no testing, no analysis to look at the long-term effects of 5G. However, when it comes to 2G, 3G and 4G, there are thousands of peer reviewed published studies in reputable scientific or, um, publications that show damage to the environment and to humans. And we can get into it. There's cancer, there's sperm damage, there's uh, learning disabilities and learning disorders. There's, uh, uh, Paul's uh, more qualified, he'll talk about uh, anywhere from three to 10% of the, of the population have debilitating effects from uh, exposure to wireless radiation. So, you know, as I say, I've, I've been at this for almost a decade now. Uh, I've put my reputation and all my efforts on this and, and I am very, very concerned. Mm, and so looking at that, uh, Paul, you know, uh, you're uh, certainly an expert and, and this is what you study. Um, so uh, tell me about that, because, you know, there are those out there and Courtney, we uh, sort of dealt with that um, is, you know, some people think this is, um, you know, uh, this is out there stuff that, you know, it maybe it's hypochondria or something uh, with uh, these individuals in the neighborhood. Um, so tell me about, um, you know, these health effects and, and the legitimacy of, of these arguments. Well, first, I'd like to say that Frank is a lot more virtuous than I am because I am actually paid by McGill University to protect your health. In other words, I am a specialist of this question. Frank is doing this purely out of the goodness of his heart, in other words. So he is a true, a true believer. Whereas I worked for a power utility, then for 10 years, then I worked for as a consultant to the telecommunications industry. And I am very, very, uh, I would say, cognizant of the attitudes within the circles of engineering in relation to this question. And I'm very happy that Frank is, is, is there to confirm this focus that industry has on their own products at the exclusion of practically everything else. 
In other words, you can, within an organization that is focused on a product, develop a culture that eliminates all concerns for health and for people other than the bottom line. This is how corporations function. So I have been working uh, in the lab uh, and with epidemiologists on this question for a very, very long time. And I know that the scientific community is convinced that there are genuine effects of electromagnetic fields that have to be controlled. In other words, this is just like a chemical. You have to treat it with respect and you have to be quantitative about how you do it. And as Frank mentioned, this deployment called 5G is truly an invasion. It's truly a bad idea, even technically. It's simply of a desire of an industry to expand. Originally, industry would tell us that these effects were impossible. That was impossible that these things could occur. Electromagnetic radiation can't do that. As time went on, they realized this line is absolutely untenable. Now they're telling us there are effects, but we can't figure out exactly what they are and include them into a standard. So this is what we call stalling tactics. And every industry that has a product that has the deterioration effects behaves exactly in the same way. And within their own industry, are they going to tell their workers, you know, this stuff is dangerous, but we're not telling anyone. No, they will propagate the notion, the false notion, according to which non-ionizing radiation doesn't do anything to anyone but I have done tests myself in my own laboratory to, to explore these questions. And I saw that the line that is promoted by industry is absolutely untenable, but they are a large group. They have a desire to expand. And when people get sick, they will tell them that they're wrong. They will tell them that you're not experiencing this. And for, probably five decades, they have been undermining the science that proved that they were health effects. And now they are in the process of under undermining large institutions like the National Toxicology Program in the United States and the Ramazzini Institute in Italy. In other words, for science, the answer is clear. Even the epidemiologists acknowledge the effects with a report in 2002 and 2011 that says that this is associated with cancer, which is only one of the problems of, of this radiation. So when your own national toxicology program with a, a, you know, a, a project that costs upward of $25 million tells you clear evidence of carcinogenicity, Explain to me what is not clear about that, please. And that's it. Mm. And, uh, you know, looking at that again, you've seen how this type of scenario has played out in industry after industry, Pittsfield, Massachusetts, until 1977, I believe, we were told that PCBs were okay. Um, clearly, they were not, and they are uh, a carcinogen, and, uh, and now, uh, for many, many uh, decades, we've been trying to clean that up uh, after General Electric. Uh, has left town. So, you know, that's just one example. There's the tobacco industry, similar curve as far as that sort of communication and so forth. So, um, so you know, Frank, you know, where are we in this uh, curve? Because I think we were talking before how, uh, you know, this is sometimes a 30 year process, unfortunately, right. be especially because again, who's making the laws? You know, the, the, the laws are being, uh, you know, uh, shaped uh, by uh, powerful interests, and those interests are the ones that have the dollars behind it and the power, and those are the, the communications uh, companies. Well, John, I say, unfortunately, I think we are still uh, at the beginning of trying to get government to recognize publicly that there is a problem. I think the challenge we have in Health Can is very similar to the one that you have in the U.S., where the agency, in the, in the case of the U.S., is the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, it was a very interesting report by Harvard, uh, by the Harvard Press, 
that label the FCC the most captured agency in the US. In other words, the influence of by the telecommunications on the, on the FCC is so strong that it's actually basically constipating the FCC. And so what we're seeing is not only cell towers that you have in, 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 um, in Pittsfield being, being put up without the proper process and notification, you've got legislation being brought forth you know, at, the, at the national level, at the FCC level, where they're trying to actually railroad and jam local municipalities and take away all the control. So unfortunately, we're not, you know, you mentioned um, uh, PCBs, you know, you can add to that less urea formaldehyde insulation, you know, the list goes on and on and on, thalidomide, you know, um, and, and we just don't seem to be learning from our mistakes. So what the efforts of Dr. Haru and, and others are, is to try to get government agencies to recognize that there's a problem before it's too late. And unfortunately, based on what I've heard of some of the, the impacts on some of the residents, you know, in, the, in your area near that cell tower, unfortunately, we see far, far too many of those situations where the government's trying to scramble and react when they could have, you know, act on this ahead of time. And so, as I say, we're trying to get in front of this curve and not have it be another two decades before legislation catches up with the actual effects that the science is showing today. And uh, Courtney, you know, we, we've seen is uh, what the city of Pittsfield um, has uh, done or not done. Um, there has been a situation where essentially um, the Board of Health is saying, well, we're not qualified to uh, have this conversation um, at this point. Um, but uh, in contrast, uh, other communities have taken measures and are taking measures on this, uh, which I find very interesting um, that, uh, you know, even other states are doing uh, things uh, to protect uh, residents uh, from uh, cell towers being too close to homes. So, um, you know, so there, there actually is uh, some progress, but it looks like, like in Pittsfield, that progress isn't where other communities have gone. Absolutely. And we've seen it because it pops up on the newsfeed all the time, moratoriums on 5G, exactly what Mr. Clegg said, that there is no science and we don't have any safe limits of RF EMF that I know of. There's nobody can show my family a report to say, your children are now exposed to 500,000% more RF EMF radiation than what was previous prior to the cell tower. And that is within a safe limit. So FCC has a guideline, but they are not a safety organization. So we're seeing municipalities having moratoriums saying, Time out. We don't want this here until we have safety studies. Municipalities are asking for insurance. So if people are harmed, can there be coverage? Um, they're asking to make sure that they're away from residential areas and that there are setbacks. And they're asking for RF levels, emissions from these towers to be tested independently three times a year at least. So not Verizon coming out and testing cell tower emissions on a day where they can turn the power down. And Dr. Haro can speak to the physics of these cell towers because I'm still learning. Um, but to have independent RF scientists who are aligned with um, the building biologists or aligned with the science to show biological damage. So not this microwave thermal, did this plastic dummy filled you know, with a liquid head get heated up one degree? And you can, Frank, you can speak to that as well. But my children who are actually here exposed to this tower 24 seven under, you know, having the pandemic, they're schooling from home, we're working from home, there is no break. But the biological impact, where, where are those studies? Because the science is out there, but it doesn't seem like it has translated into legislative protected pr protections here in Massachusetts. New Hampshire has got the commission to study the harms, the 15 protections that they're looking to put into place. New York is looking to do the same thing. Other places are doing it. And it seems like the places that are educated who understand the science are the ones who are doing it first. So Dr. Uh, Hero, you know, tell me about that a little bit, you know, we're talking about the sort of those tests, you know, more specifically, um, you know, the effects, you know, cancer is just one, as Frank uh, mentioned, um, that, that seems to be uh, a risk there. Um, but, but what, you know, today, and, and, and right now it's not 5G, um, I know we're 4G, right, uh, Courtney, um, uh, coming from that particular tower, 
but um, but tell me about um, the impact of of what you found uh, from these cell towers on on especially children. So uh, we know a fair amount about the effect of. Uh, uh, 2, 3, and 4G radiation because it has been around for a while. And uh, essentially, there are results from cell studies, there are results from animal studies, there are results from epidemiology. And all of, the, of them converge to the fact that essentially this radiation is absolutely not innocuous. For example, in, in Pittsfield, if you implant that tower, the people who live within 500 feet of that tower, 500 meters, sorry, that's 1,600 and some feet, if they have cancer, they're much more likely to die in short order. In other words, these towers, when they are installed, kill people. In other words, we know for a fact that they kill the people who already have cancer, they'll die sooner. And we also know that they'll get more cancers. How can this evidence that comes from every corner of the world be ignored? Well, the reason is that science is very rarely simple. In other words, uh, science does not provide very, very clear evidence all the time. But the evidence can be understood by experts. It can also be undermined by people who wish to undermine it. In other words, when industry doesn't like the results of science, it simply undermines it. In other words, it generates endless discussion until everybody wants to go home and essentially they say, we can't do anything about it. But in fact, what we in public health are asking is for these telecommunication functions to be achieved more safely, safely than with wireless only. Industry wants to push wireless because it's highly profitable. This is the history of wireless. We don't think wireless should be eliminated, but it should be made safer. And on the cell issue, you know, there are hundreds, if not thousands of studies that show troubling effects, changes in cells, and especially changes, increases in what we call reactive oxygen species. In my own lab, I show that electromagnetic radiation will increase the rate at which cells die by various biological mechanisms. We have many animal experiments that were directed very specifically to cancer that tell us that uh, even two in 1992, four times the rate of cancer. The U.S. Air Force wasn't too happy about these results. They tried to, I would say, hide these results as long as they could. And essentially, industry, by its influence, has managed to keep these results under wraps. The, the fact is that your politicians don't have the time to explore science in detail. And so what this means in practice is that they are under the influence of lobbyists. Mm -hmm. I don't think Courtney has a lobbyist in Washington, but our politicians should wake up to the fact that lobbyists are not the truth. In other words, when there is science beyond the lobby, politicians have to listen. And the evidence now, after the NTP report, after the Ramazzini report, so the NTP report said, it's dangerous to hold a phone to your head. The Ramazzini Institute report, which is an equally expensive study, said it's dangerous to live near a cell phone tower. So this is science speaking. Industry's line is that don't worry about it, buy it. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are great alternatives in technology to get great telecommunications. You can study at home. Optical fiber is potentially millions of times faster than 5G. 5G is a pale update to lead you to buy another cell phone next year. And that's it. And, and Frank, the idea of electro hypersensitivity, this is not some newfangled thing. Um, it is accepted. Uh, it's codified in healthcare, uh, you know, even in the United States on this. So this is, you know, this is not like some new thing. It's, it's really accepted. 
Yes, it's a very real uh, symptom. There's a debate about whether it's 3% of the population that's impacted or up to 10 or 15%. What we do know that, you know, there, is, there are cumulative effects from radiation and pe more people will be exposed to radiation and therefore there will be more people that will be sensitized to it. Uh, you know, some of the symptoms are, some people call it brain fog or dizziness, heart palpitations, um, tinnitus, you know, the ringing in the ear, numbness in the extremities, and there's different degrees. I've, I've got emails from people that are actually debilitated. They cannot even get out of their house. They cannot get to, they cannot go to work. Uh, they have difficulty even getting out of bed to, to do stuff, normal things around the house. Um, the, the Sweden is probably leading the world. It is a recognized illness in Sweden that you can actually get government support and, and assistance for. The Austria Medical Association has a questionnaire that they give to their family physicians to talk to their patients about it. So this is, you know, Dr. Belpalm out of France has done some amazing work trying to identify some of the, the impacts in the, at the DNA level and some of the strands. And Paul can talk about this a lot better than I can. So there's a lot of good research going on there. In fairness to the WHO, where they kind of throwing their hands up about it and saying, yeah, we think there's an impact, but we don't know what, people react differently to it, to, to the radiation, to the wireless connections, to, to the cell towers. And so it's very hard to say, hey, here's the cause, cell tower, and here's the five effects because they do vary. But, but it is recognized, as you mentioned, there are codes for it in the medical system. Uh, Austria and Sweden are doing some groundbreaking work and there's a lot of science behind uh, showing that there are impacts and these impacts are real. So you know, the, the residents of Pittsfield that are getting this is not in your head. It's not psychological. It's not, not psychosomatic. These are real things that are happening in your body because of your exposure to the radiation from that cell tower. Mm. And, uh, and Courtney, that's something uh, that, uh, you know, you've done some research on as well, that, um, you know, the psychosomatic kind of uh, thing, which we've heard in this community has been pushed back. Um, you know, the idea that everyone there is a hypochondriac um, and, and it's not real. Um, and that's, and it's gotta be tough on you, you know, it's gotta be tough, uh, you know, because it's, it's kind of like, the, it's almost like this gaslighting thing. Like I, I feel sick, but like, but everyone's saying that it's psychosomatic and, you know, and what do you think? It's gotta be, it's gotta be tough on you psychologically in the neighborhood. I think it's challenging when people, um, you know, ask about it, but I feel more, um, I feel very grateful when people learn alongside with us because I didn't know about this before it happened to us either. I, I mean, I'm not sure I would have maybe even believed somebody if they had had this experience and my family and my neighbors hadn't experienced it as well. Um, it was a shock to me. And what I think was even more shocking was when our pediatrician gave us the American Academy of Pediatrics position statement on cell towers and said that studies had been conducted and that if you live within 500 meters or 1,650 feet of a base station, people experience headaches, nausea, dizziness, ringing in the ears and insomnia. And there it was written in the American Academy of Pediatrics right there um, about the increased cancer risk. So doctors know about this, scientists know about this. We wanna protect our children from it. But now as parents, who live up here in Shacktown with the cell tower, we have to make a decision. Do we leave our family home that my children were literally born into? This is the only home they've ever known. Uh, do we move uh, because we don't want them ex exposed to those things because that's how we knew the tower was on. We didn't know when the tower was going to be turned on. The tower was up, the lights were blinking. We had no idea, but my daughter just turned 10 and came downstairs. And I remember telling you this story on the other podcast. She said, mommy, I feel dizzy, headachy, and my head is buzzing. And another neighbor said, I woke up in AFib this morning. And I said, what's that? And he said, my heart skipped a beat. And another family closest were like, we feel like we've got like this like rolling headaches. And I called Verizon and they confirmed that that was the day that they fired up the tower. So we didn't need the city of Pittsfield to tell us. The people here felt an impact and then it was confirmed at a later date that that was indeed when it was. So when people take the time to ask and get to know this, they're often like, wow, there is science. Oh, I did read the American Academy. Oh, I did read the research that's out there. And people are starting to learn. And if we can speak up against it, 
um, you know, or, or educate other people then and, and protect them, then I think we can make some traction because our legislators have been hearing this testimony from doctors for years. And yet there are still, there is a gap in the protections and the legislation. So we know we have the science. The American Academy of Pediatrics is saying we need to protect our children. And yet municipalities are building cell towers right next to our homes. Mm. And uh, so, Paul, and that's something, you know, again, the United States, Sweden, Austria, different worlds <laughs> right now, um, as far as that goes. And then also health organizations, uh, not necessarily departments of health quite yet, uh, but um, health organizations saying one thing, FCC completely, essentially oblivious to it. Yes, uh, electromagnetic hypersensitivity has been with us for a very long time. It's probable that Nikola Tesla suffered from it. But uh, although uh, there was a certain population who was exposed to this radiation who suffered from sensitivity, it didn't come into great force until we develop cellular phones, the second generation, the third and the fourth generation. Why? It's because at that moment, people began to be exposed in great numbers to pulsed radiation. Pulsed radiation is the fact that you modulate the radiation to put that on. But whenever you use a cell phone, you have to transmit data. So all of this high frequency radiation is pulsed. There are bursts of radiation. In other words, the emitter turns off and then on and off and on very, very rapidly so as not to waste battery power. So what this does is that the nervous system in particular is very sensitive to pulse radiation. So this has created in practically every large country in the world a population of electrosensitive people. And now you're beginning to wonder, why is it that these facts have not translated into precaution? And the reason is that it has been drowned out by the enthusiasm over high technology, which is supposed to make everybody so rich. But actually, if you look at the curves, the introduction of cell phones reduce the productivity of the US economy. Of course, the telcos will never tell you that, they will tell you this is going to be a bonanza. You know, you'll never live the same way. We knew, need it for remote surgery. It's not true. We need it for driverless cars. It's not true. They will invent any motive to push their sales through. This is what they do. They can't do anything else. Those people make transistors and powers. They're not concerned about your health and they're not knowledgeable about it. When a study comes out, they hire people to undermine it. And you have to apply pressure. Otherwise, you will suffer the consequences. And that is the role of government uh, is to be able to uh, push back. I mean, you know, uh, we all wear seatbelts uh, now. Uh, and there's a reason for that. You know, again, all these examples. And, and I think this nation was a lot better at protecting its citizens decades ago. And that has uh, not been the case. And as you said, with the FCC in particular, um, the, the corporations are in just about full control. So um, so in, in, in this nation, other nations, different, um, you know, better protections, uh, so forth, and they're more ahead, like in Sweden and Austria and so forth. So. Um, so where we go from here, um, you know, Courtney, uh, there, there is a uh, Board of Health uh, hearing, I believe, on Monday, uh, from uh, what I understand, uh, you won't have a lot of time to speak um, at that uh, particular hearing. Um, but, um, but, you know, wh where do we go from here? Well, we do have a Board of Health and their um, mission statement is to protect the public health and to also investigate environmental um, nuisances and toxins. And um, per their website, they also make sure that emissions of any sort um, are adhering to state, local, and federal guidelines. And towers obviously fall under FCC, which are federal guidelines. One of the things that we're hoping that they will do is that they will conduct an investigation. 
um, there's 13 people that I know of who have suffered the health effects of the tower, who feel the sudden onset of biological symptoms um, that uh, correlate with when the tower started transmitting. Now, there's other people here who might be older who feel like, you know, I, yes, I'm not sleeping well, or I have some more headaches or more memory loss, but is it related to the tower? Is it related to just everyday stress, I don't know. Um, I can tell you the health of my children, what it was before the tower came and after, and I can tell you what it's like when we spend a week away from the cell tower in another house where we have um, no cell towers around and how their health is in terms of the headaches and the nausea and the dizziness. So I would hope that the health uh, department would come up to Shacktown and conduct an investigation. And Dr. Haro, along with Dr. Goldberg um, and Dr. Uh, Gollum, have volunteered as experts to help these efforts. So where Pittsfield says we don't have the expertise and experience, I'm sure when COVID, when you know global pandemic came, they didn't have the expertise and the experience to deal with the pandemic here in Pittsfield either. They consulted the experts, people who have done this work before, to show them what can be done, what we what we should be doing in terms of protecting our public health. We can also hire an independent RF engineer to come out and to take reads of the tower. Um, people have said, is it 5G? Is it 4G? People have seen my meter reads and maybe there's a little combination of both going on in this tower. Some new 4G LTE, 5G enabled technology. Maybe these are the bands that are making people sick. But unless we even know what's on the tower, how do we even know what the admission standards are meant to be? How do we know what biologically you know, how the effect is. So I would hope that we can hold the health, uh, you know, department accountable to doing their job. And if we lack the expertise here in Pittsfield to be able to determine if towers are detrimental to human health, then we should not be permitting them. Uh, because Pittsfield was the permitting agent for this tower, we should not be permitting them unless we have some safeguards in place for the people who live closest to them. Mm, so there it is, uh, hold the, the health department accountable hold the mayor accountable, hold the city council, um, you know, uh, and, and you only do that um, when you keep on at it. Because as was mentioned, I think before, one of the tools of the corporations um, is to create the sort of apathy that create the sense that we can't do anything and, uh, and, and there's no use. And that's, and that's a great tool uh, for uh, for those who just you know want to continue on uh, the path that that we've been on. Um, so uh, so I <laughs> once again, Courtney, commend you. It has been a long road, and and for Frank um, and for Paul, both of you, uh, you know, doing the work that you do, obviously very passionate and and um, great expertise here. Uh, so I thank uh, all of you for joining, and um, and I wish you the very best. Thank you for the invitation. All right, have a great day, everybody. Thank you, John. Thank you.